And this morning, the Monarch's former communications secretary joins us live to go beneath the crown, sharing how her former boss is getting royally ready for the historic day. Christina Kirarasau is at Windsor Castle. Welcome to you, Christina. Thank you so much for being with us. We're two weeks out. Tell us what's happening behind the scenes, how you think the king is preparing. Good morning, America, and good morning, Janae. I think, um, as with any enormous ceremony, if people around the world think of when you're preparing a wedding or any enormous ceremony, the king and the queen will be preparing in a similar way, as will all their staff, as will all their family. So there will be outfits to prepare. There will be jewels to get from the Tower of London, jewels that haven't been worn since the last coronation. There will be uh, cutlery to polish. There will be statues that need steam cleaning. The streets of London will be getting a polish and a decoration. Um, so the king and queen personally will be preparing and thinking of the significance of the ceremony, undoubtedly, but will also um, be uh, guiding each other in terms of the amount of TV lights that will be in Westminster Abbey. So if you imagine that the coronation in 1953 of Queen Elizabeth, there was one TV uh, uh, organization, the BBC, filming that. TV, television, was not dominant in 1953. And now there will be studio cameras from around the world filming this ceremony. And of course, the king will be wearing two crowns, one which is two and a half pounds in weight, and one St. Edward's crown, which is a massive five pounds in weight, as well as a, as well as a cloak, as well as a robe. And so he will be preparing in terms of fitness, physical and mental, so that he can walk through the procession and uh, be regal and absolutely enjoy the day as much as everybody else. Such a big difference from 70 years ago. So from 1953, Queen Elizabeth's coronation, fast forward to 2023, the UK is much more diverse and there has largely been a lackluster response from UK citizens. How do you think the King's coronation can reach out to a younger, more inclusive crowd? Well, firstly, Janae, we have a King who has done more than any uh, air in waiting for young people across the UK and throughout the Commonwealth. He has set up charities for disadvantaged, disadvantaged youngsters which have absolutely reaped dividends for so many people from walks of life who wouldn't have had opportunities otherwise. But in terms of this ceremony and its relevance to young people, I think we have to look at what is the coronation weekend. There is, of course, the pomp and pageantry of the service itself, of the procession. But equally, there is a concert here in Windsor on the Sunday for everybody to enjoy that will be televised again around the world. But 2,000 people, no matter from which walk of life, will, will be very lucky to get tickets for a spectacular concert. And there is an additional bank holiday in the UK where young people and older people, everybody is encouraged to volunteer or to have a big day out having lunch with family, friends, or people who don't have people to look after them. So it's a whole coronation weekend, and one hopes that younger people will look at King Charles and look at how relevant he is in terms of the work he's done with so many disadvantaged youngsters throughout uh, his time with us. And so much to look forward to all of the pageantry and pomp and circumstance. Christina, thank you so much for being with us today. And Christina will be back leading up to the big day, as well as our special event coverage of the coronation on May 6th. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.